Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what diggers have for week 269. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up from Catdog Joe, we've got DOS Games backslash sports backslash three underscore D Pong. Yeah, I think we're pretty sure what this is going to be. Um, 3D Pong, we got a very small doc file and an executable. So might as well just type it 3D Pong dot doc. There were no docs with this game when I got it, but it's such a well written game that you really don't need them. All the help you need is inside the exe file. Have fun. Okay, so that was clearly written by somebody who uploaded this to wherever. Um, well, I guess we're just running it then. 3D Pong, made by Compute Productions. So this might be wares, but we'll see. Um, we'll go EGA, and uh, we'll do mouse control. Okay, so we can choose a difficulty level between easy and hard, paddle size, and game speed, and ball reset. Um, I'm getting some little PC speaker effects. Um, well, I guess we'll do easy. Uh, standard paddle size. I'm not going to put the game speed on fast just in case it goes, like, really fast, but... Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, wow, that ball does not get very big. Okay, then. Um, for some reason, I feel like we've played a game like this before. Maybe not this exact one, but... Yeah, so the trick with any kind of 3D Pong game, especially when you can see through the paddle, is just keep the ball inside the paddle, and you can't lose. <laughs> now, sometimes that's easier said than done, but... Because this ball doesn't appear to... Um... Yeah, the perspective on this ball is very weird. Because it is showing a little dot at the bottom to indicate how close it is to the front, but it almost seems like it's bouncing off the paddle, yeah, before it actually gets to where it should be. So that's kind of weird. Oh, that one's going to be wild. <laughs> so I'm not sure what score we're playing to here. Maybe infinite, I don't know. But, I mean, it seems to be playing okay for the moment. I'm not sure what the physics are like here. I'm going to guess if you manage to hit the ball on the edge of your paddle, you'll get much more of a much more of an angle on it. But that's a little tricky to do just because of the um oh wow. Uh yeah, have fun catching that one. Okay, so I see how it's doing it now. So it's putting um movement on the ball based on how fast the paddle is moving when it hits it. So if your paddle is just stationary, then the ball just bounces pretty normally. But if we can manage to get a nice, fast-moving hit here... Well, that one this is going to do it. Come on. Yeah, so that's kind of did it there. Yeah. So if you can get the... Whoa. Well, that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> so yeah, the faster the paddle's moving when the ball hits it, the more of a... Oh wait, that should have done it. Okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> what? That did not hit that paddle! That ball was a mile away from that paddle, and yet the freaking computer somehow hit that? I call shenanigans. You all saw that. In fact, I'm gonna freeze frame the exact moment that ball bounced, and you tell me whether that's hitting the freaking paddle or not. <laughs> Anyways, that was 3D Pong. It's, um, <laughs> I mean, it's typical for a 3D Pong game, but it clearly has some weird stuff going on with the collision detection. So, nuts to that. Next up, we have a four-person team dig. The Great Code Holio, Zed Supremus, Anthony, and Adam Aroli have all dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash Mel1. Well, given that there's only two directories in the adventure directory here that we haven't seen yet, it stands to reason there's going to be a lot of people 
pull it. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of files. With a lot of people digging them up. So, 145 files. I don't even know if Dirt W is going to do it. No. <laughs> um, uh, slash W slash P. <laughs> okay. So, we've got a whole bunch of these Tom files and numbered files. Um, there's a Melvin there, so probably Melvin something for the name of our game. Uh, got some animation files, some doc files. Um, there's an executable that says Gbro. I don't know what that's about. Um, what's the rest of them? Sound files. Oh, goody, this might have sound effects. <laughs> um... Another doc file, read me first. Some batch files. Interesting. I'm going to quickly type out those batch files. Let's do the sound on dot bat first, see what that says. Interesting. So in order to turn the sound effects on and off, it simply renames all the sound files. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to do it, but... Trust me, try that with some games and the game is just going to flat out refuse to run because it can't find the files. Ooh, and playgame.bat, int interestingly here, shows that the Gbro thing is probably like some kind of game engine, given the fact that it's running melvin.gam. So, whatever this is, it was made with some kind of game engine. We'll probably find out when we go into the readmes and stuff. So, let's edit readme.first. So apparently what we have here is Mel Odious Goes Six String Searchin'. Um, I think this is a game I've heard of, but I don't think I've ever seen it before. Hmm. And so instructions to install it, play the game, just change to it and type play game. And that's all the readme first has to say. So let's see what else we've got here. So we've got game help, instructions, license, and order. Let's do instructions. So general instructions, Melodios goes six string searching is a graphic adventure game. You must type in verb slash noun combinations to interact with the game. The following verbs are most commonly used, but try others. So we got look, get, talk, use, open, walk, and give. Okay then. Okay, and it says here that you don't need to use prepositions like the, and, or, etc., but it's not saying you can't. So that, like, that's the thing with text adventures is that the more natural your your sentence structure can be, generally the easier it is to play, the more you have to conform what you type in to what's expected, that actually makes it more difficult to like get immersed into the game and to just just to relay to the game what it is you're trying to do. Especially when you consider that in some games you actually do need to use like some kind of what some kind of method of telling the game exactly what you're trying to do because of how complex an action might be like i don't know it's, it's just a thing that i've noticed with with this kind of stuff but it under it makes sense that early text adventures couldn't do stuff like that because you had so little memory to work with that you couldn't afford the space to <laughs> to actually check for these kinds of things and such well wait a minute here it says here, whenever you enter a building, the view switches to a first-person perspective, which means you no longer move your character with the keys. Wait, so is this going to kind of be like... This is going to be like um, Quest for Glory 2, where we have like the first-person sections and then like walking around like Sierra style, like the rest of the Quest for Glory games and like King's Quest and stuff. That might be interesting. Um, okay, let's check out the order form here just to see who made this. Apparently a Thomas Vitaccio. Vitaccio? Vitaco? I could go for some tacos. Um, please print or type. Where we got for price? Where's the price? Well, that's interesting. Does your system have VGA 320 by 256 color capabilities? And do you have a mouse? Interestingly specific questions he wants answers to. But also a check for $15. So that's actually pretty reasonable, depending on how this game actually plays. So let's find out. Uh, right, it's playgame.bat. So play game. Okay. So we've got a Warwick Software? Software? Uh, that wasn't the guy's name, so where did that come from? Also, 
<laughs> oh, this is something only somebody like me would notice, and probably a handful of you, but looking at those um looking at those guitars there, I wonder how many people just looking at this picture right now can identify the graphic software used to make this picture. <laughs> yeah. So Deluxe Paint 2 had this fun little perspective mode in it for tiling brushes and even filling entire fields with a brush. So I would be lying if I said I would hadn't done an effect like this like a million times before <laughs> back as a kid. So yeah, this person definitely was using Deluxe Paint to make the graphics. Okay, so Mel Odious goes six, goes searching. Warning, this game contains themes which may not be suitable for younger or more sensitive players. Uh, okay. Don't forget to save your game often, is always a wise thing to do. Okay, now we've got the full title. Mel Odious goes six string searching. So type play game to start. You can't just hit enter. Oh, and space just brings up a command interpreter. Interesting. What's the menu say? Quit, save game, load game, return to game, help, medium speed, fast speed. How to create a game. How to create a game. This game was created with Game Builder. You can also use Game Builder to create your own animated graphic. And for games, adventures, present. Interesting. I think we've actually seen this before, haven't we? Like, like not this game, but like something created with this. I think we've seen a couple things created with this. Maybe. Okay, so I guess play game. Oh, it actually has to be a two separate, two separate words. There we go. Like, wow, dude, what's up? I'm Mel Odious, soon to be Mel Guitar God Odious, and I like need your help. Most heinous things happen, dude. My baby, my lifeblood, my main axe. Yes, you guessed it. My candy apple red custom Rocky Road signature flying V guitar has been like stolen. Who could have been so cruel, you know, dude? Of course, it would have have to happen right now. Talk about your bogus timing, right, bud? You follow me, dude? You look sort of puzzled, you know? And I can't just have that because we, like, for sure have to find my guitar before this night is over. Why is that, you ask? Well, read on, my man, and I'll, like, try to explain the situation, okay? <clears throat> my voice hates me for doing that. <laughs> Uh, I am not doing that again, I promise. <laughs> I had to try. I had to try. <laughs> uh, type go on. Go on. Okay, I'm not gonna try to read more of this, so you could just pause the video and read it if you absolutely need to. Let's just go on. Okay, let's rock. Well, this is a scene. Um... It's the middle of the night. Um, this is our character who is walking around and occasionally disappearing. And there's a guy in the back holding a bottle of something and a shotgun. At least I think that's a shotgun. It's actually, it's probably just looks like that because his foot is brown and makes it look like the handle of a shotgun, but it's probably not. Hmm. So what can we do here? What if we look around? Can't look at that. Wait, what did it just say to me? I can't look that. <laughs> Apparently prepositions aren't just for the aren't just not required for the text input. They're also not required for the error messages. <laughs> okay, so now's a point a good time to point out that even though I can use the numeric keypad, it doesn't detect diagonals. So you can only move in the four cardinal directions. Anyways, um, if we just type look, okay, that doesn't do anything. Look man. The blind bum Willie Eversee is holding a bottle of whiskey and his walking stick. He's in a bad mood. Talk to man. Oh, that's interesting. It actually, like, brings up a picture of the person. Can't say that ever happened, well, not often in the early Sierra titles. Hey, buddy, can you spare a dime? Can I have that key? That violin bow is totally rad, dude. Have you seen a red... Oh, wait, these are things that I can actually say to this person. 
Oh, so that's actually kind of a neat way of doing the dialogue system is that instead of making it so that you have so that you're not predisposed to what information that you can type in or whatever, it's actually telling you right here the things you can say to this person for interactivity. That's actually kind of clever. So if I go, hey, buddy, then it's probably going to do that first thing there. Sure, kid, here, takes a million, Willie replies. Why don't you beat it? Okay, yeah, so he's not going to give me any money. So, um, how do I stop talking to him? Do I just do, um, stop? Done? Um, go on. <laughs> okay, that's weird. So you have to exit scene to stop talking to someone. And you do that shortcut with an X and an S. So, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Also, we're not really moving that fast. What was the key to move faster? F7 for medium, F8 for fast? So I guess we're already at medium. Oh wait, there we go, there's fast speed. Okay, so look door. It is the door to your building, the buzzer is on the wall next to the door. Um, can we open the door? Probably not. It's locked and you forgot your key. Someone will have to buzz you in. Um, push buzzer. It doesn't know how to push. Press buzzer. Use buzzer. Oh, there we go. So, who do we want to buzz? Um, I'm looking at these names here, and they're basically almost entirely composed of puns. <laughs> uh... Well, let's just do good old alcohol. <laughs> oh, it's... won't... wait, what? Oh, you have to type press first. Alcohol. Yeah! Um... again. <laughs> okay, that doesn't work. Uh, exit scene. Let's just move on. So you always return to the middle of the scene when you leave it for whatever reason. Well, I recognize that little ditty. Um, we got a store called Psychos here. So let's see what's inside. Um, look door. It's made of solid metal. A sliding window can be seen near the top. It has no handle. Okay, that doesn't really help us. What if we go to the back alley here? Okay, so we've got Music World. Apparently advertising Bosch instead of Boss. <laughs> or Bose or whatever. Hello, if you need any help, please let me know, the man behind the counter says. Oh, right, this is first person, so we don't actually move around this scene. Okay. So, talk to man. Looking for anything specific? I'm willing to help you in any way I can. Um, so there's something on the wall here that says I should ask the manager about the flyer, which gives you free admission to psychos. So, ask flyer? Have the flyer behind the counter. Mind if I ask what or who you're looking for? Well, I found a bank machine. Um, you know, I didn't actually look, check to see if I have anything on my character. Um, although I'm not sure how to see what my inventory is. Oh, wait, hang on. There is a look around. You have to type in LA to do it. Well, why couldn't it just use look around? Like, I mean, I tried that. If I type in look around... Our... Now it just does nothing. Although LA works, so yeah, sometimes look around either doesn't work or does nothing, but you're supposed to type in LA to get the same result. That's just bizarre. No, this guy's got the shifty eyes. So let's look at the man here. The man is wearing a trench coat. <laughs> His shifty eyes make you nervous. Uh-oh. Well, let's try talking to him anyways. Hey, kid, what you want? He replies. How about these handcuffs? They're very useful. Um, okay, I'm used to seeing people in trench coat and like various games or media selling, you know, either really bad things or things that are parodies of what people with these kind these kinds of trench coat sellers would sell. Handcuffs is not like something I would think would be commonly sold like this? 
<laughs> Why would you? I don't know. This probably goes down a rabbit hole I don't want to think about. So that was Mel Odiusco's Six String Searchin. This actually looks like a sort of competent game, but then also sort of not. But then at the same time, it's going to be limited to whatever the game engine was capable of. So, I don't know. This one's kind of weird. It's like sits between, sits between that weird range where something is done terribly and something is done really well. And it's like somewhere in the middle where it's, the person clearly had a passion for making something here, but it didn't turn out perfect. But at the same time, it kind of couldn't because whoever the person making this was clearly limited to whatever the game engine they were working with could handle. So I don't know. I guess for $15, this might have been worth it. I suspect there's a lot more going on here to have to go through. So yeah. It's, I'd say probably worth fifteen dollars if this is your kind of this is your kind of game. And our last dig for today from Kobe Retro is Win Games backslash GG backslash Spinwin. How much you want to bet this is going to be another Wheel of Fortune game? Anyways, um, Spinwin, where are we? Um, here we are, Spinwin. Um, we got some wave files, so there's going to be some sound effects for sure. File ID.this, some write files, no Windows help files. Interesting. So let's do file ID.this. Spin and Win 1.0B is a Windows 3.1 game that plays like Hangman with a Las Vegas twist. Okay, manual.write. So this is made by a Dan Purati? Purade? Purati? Or Pur. I'm not. <laughs> That's like the shortest na shortest last name I haven't yet been able to figure out how to pronounce right away. <laughs> anyway, Spin and Win is a Windows 3.1 game that plays like Hangman, but a lot of... Yeah, okay, so I already read that. Um, shareware, $10. Okay, that's a little weird. Okay, so the way this game works is it's definitely an analog to Wheel of Fortune, except there's different special conditions depending on what the spinner spins. So if the spinner value is $50 or less, then the player wins a free spin for later use, spins again. Spinner value is $9.50 or more, the player loses their turn and no score is made. Spinner value is between $4.50 and $5.50, then you're allowed to pick a vowel, but you don't get any points for it. And if the spinner spins all the same digit, one, two, or three, then that's basically the equivalent of bankrupt. So that would be, if this is work, going to work the way I think it is, that would be basically be a 1 in 10 chance of that happening. No, sorry, 1 in, th one in 100 chance. So not that would actually be less common bankrupt than in the real Wheel of Fortune. Although a spinner value of 950 or more would be, I think, a 1 in 20? No. Oh, no, I had it right, 1 in 20 chance. And same for the free spin here. So you're actually more likely to get bankrupt in this game. <laughs> or no, that's 1 in 100. Okay, so 5 times less likely to get bankrupt than losing a turn. Or getting a free spinner. Whatever. Anyways. Well, he apparently even has the bonus round as well. Okay, so let's actually play this thing. So, here we go. Spin and win. And apparently we can't press anything until it's done with the stuff so i agree so yeah this is basically wheel of fortune but with a slot machine instead of a wheel which eh, it's different i'll give it that so i got this new game um put in the player names i'm just gonna put in me see if it'll allow me to play solo once again <laughs> Now that we've heard that multiple times, that was just the that was just the Windows sound effect played backwards. Instead of do do, it's whoop. <laughs> Anyways, so the hint for this puzzle is a sane. Um, we can spin the spinners or salt phrase. So spin the spinners. Okay, that wasn't much of a spin, but apparently we got six ninety two. Um. The timer is just staying at 20. Shouldn't that be counting down to my inevitable not being able to 
Or you know what? It could be that because I'm playing solo, it doesn't ha see a point to counting down. So that could be what's going on there. Um, anyways, this is a sane. So let's start with an S. Well, I recognize that sound. Um, so spin spinners. And I just got a free spin because I spun less than $50. Okay then. So 217, let's go with uh, an H. You like to use a free spin? Well, like, it kind of doesn't matter because I'm playing solo, but... Or, hang on, I actually put guest V here and it actually put it here. So it's something else. Hmm. Not Still not sure with this one. And the thing is, you can't just buy vowels. Because the way this works, you have to spin a particular particular amount to be able to put in a vowel. So this could take a bit. So I've picked a lot of wrong letters now. <laughs> um, starting to run out of possibilities here. Like if all that's left is vowels, this might be a little tricky to figure out. Okay, so it just said there's only vowels left now. So I think under these conditions, you're allowed to... um. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> C in is B the mean. You win. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> that's kind of an ambiguous text box to bring up on a game that supports multiple players. Well, I might as well try doing one more here. We got a thing this time. So doesn't have an S in it. What about a T? Nope. What about a D? Nope, we're blank and hard right now. Oh, but we got a free vowel. Um, let's do an E. Holy jeez, does, does this puzzle have any letters at all? <laughs> like, that's a legitimate question at this point. <laughs> Are we just in a puzzle with nothing but punctuation? <laughs> do any letters exist? I ha What is this? What in the world is finally a G? <laughs> Never been so ecstatic to get a letter to show up in my life. Okay, I've got a second letter now. It's so got a B here. Um, there's, there's not enough to work with anymore. <laughs> Holy jeez. Oh, I know what it is now. <laughs> yeah, there's actually, this is a tricky one here because there's not actually a lot of different letters for across the entire set of this word. Man, it's a burglar alarm. And M. There we go. That was a tricky one. So that was spin and win. Basically a wheel of fortune slot machine as opposed to something more sane. <laughs> um, I imagine this, like, it's not that the game plays bad by any stretch. The sound effects are a little, um, stock, because they are. But... I think the major complaint is that you can't just simply buy vowels, which completely slows down the process of trying to solve the puzzle, especially when your chance of actually spinning a vowel is only 1 in 10. Because it has to be a number between 450 and 550, which means there's only 100 possibilities out of 1,000. So it's 1 in 10 shot, which means for every 10 consonants you can pick, you only get one vowel, despite the fact that the ratio of, cons of vowels to consonants in the English language is a heck of a lot bigger than that.